when Kyler Laird envisions the future of his farm, he sees robotic machinery playing a large role. For me individually, it's necessary because I don't want to, and I, I really can't, hire people to do the work that I want the machines to do. Um, the idea of being able to find a really good planter operator who's willing to work 24 hours a day for three or four days out of the year <laughs> and then go away. Um, that, that's just ludicrous. I can't get that, but I can, I can make that. So, and I can make it very inexpensively. And beyond that, I can use a much less expensive tractor. I can simplify a lot and I can reduce my costs a lot by using the technology. I see people who say, oh, well, small farmers won't be able to afford that kind of automation. And I think, I'm a small farmer. I can't afford not to have that automation. I wanted to do a little tractor. Um, and I had this little uh, John Deere 6330 that I had bought kind of on a whim. So I bought a, a planter on auction, salvage, and had a local shop, Solid Rock Farms, do a conversion with all precision planting gear. With, with Kyler's planter, um, our, our part in it was mostly the, um, the automated hardware on it. And there was a few things like the steering that he took care of, but mostly like the down pressure and the row cleaners um, and the, the, the meters. So we basically outfitted it with the latest um, meter planting technology and hydraulic downforce on every row. So we also have row cleaners on it that that automatically lift and lower when you, you, it is a manual adjustment in the cab, but it's much more automated than what it has been before. I have full confidence in what's going on um, planting our fields, and I really don't have to worry about it too much. I've got alerts that tell me exactly what's going on. I know that my down pressure is exactly how I need it. I know that my population is exactly correct. So we've got to the point where I can sit in the cab and I can think, Everything's under control, and I have full confidence that the system's going to work. So if, we, if we've got to that point, then I'm totally confident in taking the guy out of the cab. You know, we're kind of on the edge of, of that. We've got the auto steer. We've got the automated planting. The, you know, we can steer it through the field. The only thing we're really missing is the turnaround and the field setup. So we're kind of on the verge of, of being able to do that more efficiently. Um, but at the same time, that is a big leap. <laughs> Not only has Laird's autonomous machine been used to plant his crops this growing season, he entered his innovation in the AgBot Challenge. Laird, along with six other teams, competed to plant corn autonomously. We have a company in our uh, portfolio of group of companies we work with, and they, they provide rural broadband solutions for military, oil and gas, and um, marine industries, and we wanted to bring that technology to agriculture. So what we did was we set up our farm so that we have very high speed internet, capable up to gigabyte internet speed access. And when you're trying to create that vision for rural America, what we're looking for, we were looking for a symbo symbolic method to present what we could do in farming. So we came up with the AgBot Challenge, and the AgBot Challenge was essentially the challenge to the young folks in the universities and private companies to provide solutions to the farmer if they had that kind of broadband access. So this is basically a presentation to them of some of the things that could be accomplished in American agriculture if we allowed the innovation in other industries and robotics to come here and work with us in, in ag. Some believe the beefy machines in farm fields today will be downsized to smaller machines and will work in groups of five or more swarming a field. These smaller machines have the potential to solve several issues facing farmers and could be the catalyst for a major shift in agriculture. In, in agriculture today, and this is one of the things that I found most interesting about the competition when we started it last year, um, you know, you've, you, your, your, your setup for planting is a tractor planter combination. And the cost to get into agriculture today for that tractor planter combination is probably three, four, five hundred thousand dollars. We saw some teams take a traditional tractor planter combination and, and make it autonomous. So essentially make it self-driving. That's, that's probably the most straightforward approach to, to, to solving uh, the planning challenge. But there was a different section of, of uh, teams that completely rethought the problem. The, what they, the way uh, they came at the problem was, 
if there's no need for a person, there's no need for a seat. If there's no need for a seat, why do we need the tractor? And so when you take away the tractor, then you get it down to the planter. Now you have to figure out, okay, how can I make this planter move, right? And so what you, they ended up with is basically a combination, a purpose-built, self-propelled autonomous planter. It changes the entire uh, economic logistics of planning because a self-contained autonomous planner could be produced much, much cheaper uh, than what a combination tractor planner can be done. Um, the price point for one of these, they figure, might be around $50,000. So $50,000 versus $500,000. While the, the concept is, is kind of radical in terms of how we've approached this, this problem in the past, the, uh, the opportunity is totally new. Uh, you know, those of us that think about planning would never have thought about creating a self-propelled autonomous planner, uh, and that's the kind of thing that some of these teams come up with. While the AgBot Challenge is working to move this technology forward, there are still obstacles to overcome. Back in 2016, we looked at the autonomous concept vehicle to show basically what that future could be. So our customers had indicated in the spring tillage they could see it fitting in to allow us to have multiple units in the field to have that spring prep of that ground completed. What they did tell us is that they actually wanted to sit in that tractor cab with the planter attached. And because they said, well, that's a high dollar crop they're putting in the ground as well as the inputs, they wanted to make sure that they were having visual eyes on that. And they followed it up with what type of sensors could you actually see on the planter being implemented. And those are the areas that we're exploring further. One thing that I think it needs to be, be developed to really enable autonomous systems are perception systems. And you need to be able to perceive things that you shouldn't drive over and pathways that you should drive down so that you can deploy a really safe system and that you can go through and you can detect uh, people uh, in the field, you can detect areas that you shouldn't drive such as big potholes, you can detect uh, pathways which you should drive down so that when you look at the system from the outside it's making a smart decision just as a human would. The guy that wants to sit in his tractor and drive it around, I mean, uh, we saw this with auto steer, right? Uh, auto steer had sort of the same issue, you know, like, why do I need something else to drive my tractor for me? I'm, I'm in it, right? Um, and, and similar sort of adoption, I think, with auto steer. Now guys, you know, a lot of guys that use it won't, won't live without it. Um, I, I think autonomous vehicles uh, can be about the same. We saw an example here today where, um, you know, a guy has a day job and he farms. It's just him. And so if he's running a combine, who's running his green cart? Uh, and, and he used the technology to basically be a one-man operation where he is in the tractor, but he's not in his, running his green cart, right? And his green cart could move between him and the guy operating his trucks uh, to get his grain off the field. So, you know, it's, it's a compliment. Um, you know, are we, are we going to replace farmers? No, because farmers love what they do, right? They love to be farmers. You know, these vehicles, uh, they have a place. I think, uh, I think it'll be just another tool in, uh, in the farmer's toolbox. Hi, I'm Dave Mowitz. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit subscribe right here if you haven't already, and click that little bell right here to be notified when we post a new video and click here to see more great videos.